Dan Girardi, now working with the Buffalo Sabres. This is the 50th episode of the uh, Block Party. As you can see, G Money is behind me. That is what I got when the Lightning won the Stanley Cup last year. They gave that to me. Obviously, I got no ring. I didn't get any time with the Stanley Cup, but they gave me the G Big Head to take home. So that's with me forever, man. I'm staring at that thing 24-7. Yeah, too bad you guys. Too bad you guys stare at it all day. But uh, you know, that's the least I could do for the team. Uh, two years I was there, getting getting him ready to win a Stanley Cup. <laughs> what were the? What was it like for you watching? Man, was it was it mixed emotions, or were you just root, were you rooting for them all the way? Oh, I, I was for sure rooting for them. I, you know, at the beginning of the year when I retired, I, I think I might have been talking to Cali or someone. I'm like, I know they're going to win the cup this year, just because we're not there anymore. Like, I know they're going to win. And then with the, obviously the season got canceled for a bit, uh, started up in the bubble. And obviously it was, we we were cheering for them, you know, knowing all those guys pretty well. And, um, you know, it was a, it was pretty, it was a pretty cool feeling watching those guys enjoy the moment. What did you think? Do you think that you would have been able to, to last in the bubble? Do you think that that would have been your kind of style or would you have been going crazy in there? Well, the first step would have been trying to get to the bubble. Uh, there was a long break in between, and I don't know <laughs> the the way my body feels. It would have been tough to get back in shape and get back out there. But um, you know, the bubble. I I think it was a pretty unique situation for all the guys. To like, we do spend a lot of time on the road together. But you know, usually maybe this group of guys, that group of guys. But to hang, have you know, twenty five guys chilling in their own hotel area, you know, going to BMO Field there in Toronto, like playing around, and then in Edmonton, like. That's uh, yeah, some pretty serious bonds you got going there. Who was the uh, who was the first guy that texted you? Please tell me somebody texted you from the team. Um, you know what? I think it was Mac Truck. I think he sent me a picture or something like that. Um, you know, but obviously I I sent out a bunch of texts to it everybody, um, everyone that had their number. So um, <laughs> you know, it took, obviously it took a couple guys for a long time. I'm sure they were, you know, well deep into the Bud Light. So. Um, you know, but I was glad, you know, I couldn't be happier for him. Um, it was a pretty, very unique, very cool situation to watch unfold. So gee, I want to know, obviously you're with the Buffalo Sabres right now. Are you a developmental, developmental coach, development coach? What's the official title? Uh, yeah. Player development in, in that, in that category there. Um, uh, there's a, there's a director of the player development. Now I'm kind of working with the D prospects and, you know, kind of watching their games, you know, kind of showing them the way a little bit. Um, it's only been a month less, almost less than a month now. So still trying to find my way. And um, it's, it's definitely something really unique that I can hopefully help these kids with. Now, how did this job come to be? Cause I, I feel like before this didn't, were you doing anything with the, with the MSG network? Uh, I was possibly going to do some stuff. I did an interview here and there. But there was really, obviously, with everything that's going on, there was really no um, set game plan. But then um, my uh, my good friend I grew up with here, well in Ontario, um, is a director of player development for the Sabres. So I had a little, I had a little, little in, <laughs> little little feeling though that I might have been getting a call because um, I knew they had, you know, they were trying to fill some roles. But you know, it, it makes me feel good because he reached out to me and he likes the type of player I am the type of human I am, um, you know, always a team first guy and that, you know, and the GM was happy to have me along as well. So all that together made me feel really wanted and, you know, kind of excited for this new, obviously we had a, we had a unreal time doing the podcast. It's, this is something different now that I'm kind of like back in the game. So it's, uh, it's, it's kind of new and exciting for me. Well, I think, you know, I, you know, we always knew you were going to be involved with the game. I think we knew you were going to end up, you know, being a coach at, you know, in some, in some regards, you know, at some point it's, it seems like it's, you know, the process is happening maybe sooner than you anticipated. What was the process like when you got this job, even though you knew, you knew the guy in charge, did you still have to go through the process of interviewing and all that stuff? Um, yeah, I actually had to do a resume, which was first time since I was like 16, but, uh, it was did your wife help it, you with it. No, actually, I did it myself. It was a uh, good job. You know, a, lot, a lot of hockey stuff in there. I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> Are you a but, player? <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, so you know, it was it was pretty cool. Like you know, I think there was a lot of a couple other guys involved. Um, but you know, it, like I said, it's pretty cool to be wanted, but still have to like, okay, I gotta you know send this in and talk to talk to my friend a little bit and make sure I'm 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 all in and and, and I am and. 
you know, they're, they're definitely an organization that's kind of turning the corner with the guys they brought in. And so it's, it's very exciting. Tell me about your first day on the job. Was it awkward for you? Well, it wasn't, you know, it, it's, it's not too bad. Cause you kind of, you kind of dictate your own hours a bit, but you still have to get a lot done during the day. So if I want to, you know, crank it out in the morning or, you know, whenever, um, you know, watch my video, do this and that, you know, the, fir- the, the hard thing, the first thing was, you know, calling the prospects and doing the introduction and, you know, trying to carry on a conversation with guys overseas. And like, you know, you, like some guys it was easy. Some guys, you know, you're, it's just, you don't know, like they, they don't know me. Don't, they don't know me. I don't know them. So it's uh, it's fun just to kind of get that going. And, you know, now I made all my calls, you know, text every week, you know, try to make sure they're feeling good. And, you know, it's a lot of video watching, which is something I didn't do a lot when I played, but <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, maybe I should have, I should have probably did a little more. Uh, but it, it's really, like I said, take a lot of notes, you know, I'm a very, a lot of guys, I'm a very organized guy. So this is a perfect job for me to, you know, watch games, take notes and file it away. Do you find it hard to critique guys when you have to give them some criticism or is that, you know, is that easy for you to do? Or do you kind of try to sandwich it with a compliment? Yeah. You know, you gotta, you know, you want to tread lightly a little bit. You don't want to like, especially now just being new, like, you know, kind of making sure the guy is feeling good, like, you know, playing well, you know, you know, if you ask for some things, I'll, I'll give him a couple ideas, but like I said, I'll, you know, rent, you know, I'll send them some clips or whatever. Like, Hey, you know, maybe try this next time. Like it's never like you're terrible. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> so that that's the best part about it. all, all, all our prospects and everyone else that's drafted or whatever. Like all the kids are good. All the players are really good. So you just got to find that little thing to hopefully get them over the edge. I mean, Dan, you're a young guy. You're like 36. I mean, this is, it's, it's crazy. I feel like you're, you're young to be in this position. Does it feel like that to you? Or do you feel like you're an old guy? Hey, you know, that now they have to talk to these 19 and 20 year olds. Yeah. Like it, in the hockey realm in the hockey world, I'm an old guy, which is crazy. Cause I tell out the people, you know, I meet at my kid's school or ever like, Oh yeah, yeah. I'm kind of older. Like how old 36? Like, what are you talking? Like, what do you like? Do you know what I mean? Like, it's kind of like, I get caught into that line of thinking a lot, but uh, you know, in the hockey world, you know, just fresh out of the game, but still older, like you said, 15, 16 years older than these kids. Like that's, that's a big, big difference in a lot of, a lot of hockey games played. And it, it's a lot different to what the world they're growing up in and what, how I started. So finding the happy medium there is a good, it's fun. Are these kids familiar with, with how you played and that, you, you know, when you called them up and initially said that you were going to be their coach, did they know who you were? Had they heard of you? Um, I, I think so. Uh, uh, you know, a couple, a couple of the prospects were kind of excited to talk to me and stuff. So like, once again, that got me excited and, and making me feel good. And, you know, I am just hoping to help in any way off the ice, on the ice, like any, any little thing that I can help the Buffalo organization or these guys, or these prospects coming up. That's pretty much why they brought me in just to help them in any aspect they need. Were you have when you were doing the podcast and you weren't like, you know, you were you were coaching Landon and you were doing everything, but like, you know, you weren't involved with the game like you are now. Did you was that I know you didn't miss playing at all, but did that you miss that that year, didn't you? Yeah, like it's yeah, it's it's weird how you you feel like I really didn't care too much. Like I retired. I'm like, oh, you know, I'll watch some hockey, like whatever if it's on. But like I feel like I didn't really think about that much, but now that I have this position, like I'm kind of like back, back in, I'm feeling like, you know, I got some good energy every day. Like, you know, I'm watching, obviously I'm watching all the Sabre games, but I do watch the lightning games when I can just to, you know, probably steal a couple of things from them since they're so good, but <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know, you know what I'm saying? I like, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm up like up pretty late every night watching some of the late games and, you know, just trying to stay current with all the hockey stuff, right? Like, you know, I just want to make sure I'm up to date and, like I said, I like watching and, and absorbing and always trying to learn. So tell me, so is Landon involved in hockey? Did you get him on a team up there? Is he involved with a bunch of superstars like he was down here with Vinny's son and Coach Cooper's kid? Uh, you know what? We we He has a team here uh, called the Southern Tier Admirals. It's a AAA team here locally. Um, you kind of see it in my hat, and I got my got my gear on here. There but, you go. Uh, um, but, you know, it, it it's a lot different then uh with this COVID stuff where i'm living and how you guys handle it like we're <laughs> yeah we're well, what do you mean what, what do you mean we're you guys yeah we're not going to get into it too much about that but 
I know, wear a mask, we, okay? I'm not yeah, a wild well, Floridian. I wear a mask, okay? <laughs> no, but, but that's beside the point. What I'm saying is I, I know we, we were just kind of practicing for a long time, and finally we got allowed to play games against our local team here, um, the, all the local AAA team on the other, uh, other side of Niagara here. So um, we're doing that for a while, and then right before Christmas that we got tossed in a little, you know, went down a, in more of a lockdown situation. Um, that word is like really it's like a crazy word to keep talking about lockdowns, but yeah, like we're actually in what we're in one still right now. Kids are home from school. Um, you know, kudos to my wife for taking care of the kids and doing their online school while I'm, you know, watching hockey videos. You know what I mean? Like I'm I got the easy job, but, um, you know, it, it was going well and now we're kind of shut down. But, you know, when I first got home, I, uh, made a decision to put in a backyard rink out back you know, put a little court back there and now it's a, now it's an ice rink. So, you know, we're getting a ton of work <laughs> back there. <laughs> Wait, now you didn't put the rink in yourself, did you? Oh no, no, no. Okay. It's something I had to pay for. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I... it's, it's, a, it's, it's pretty big. It's pretty big back there. Uh, I got the boards, got some lights, um, got some tunes going out there. So it, it's legit. Like, um, it's probably a little smaller than I'm not sure how familiar with our, but extra ice in, in Tampa here or here, there. <laughs> um, it's kind of like that smaller size feel. So it's a little smaller than that, but it's, it's, it's looking like a rink. Oh my God. Gee, I need they send me a picture. Let me see how this is looking. I need, this is like, cause I, I follow Chris Dingman on, on Instagram and I saw he put in a rink in his backyard. I don't look like he built it himself. You know, I know that yours is probably yeah. looking much better, but I, I got to yeah. see what this looks like. All right. See, like a I'll, I'll, as we're talking, I'll just check the old folder here. What's the uh, what's the weather where you are? Because uh, do you miss rollerblading around? Because it's uh, fifty nine degrees here in Tampa today. Yeah, it's uh, it's getting a lot of snow, so I'm getting my workouts in, shoveling the rink out back. And, <laughs> um, yeah, it's definitely uh, it's it's nice and cold and snowy, but it's the it's fun to get outside, and the kids love it, right? They haven't done it in a while, three years. They haven't really seen snow and played in snow, so. Um, very, very fun. You know, it is, it does get a little chilly back there when we go skate at night and, you know, you gotta, you gotta bundle up, but then you, you know, you bundle up, then you start skating, you start sweating. So it just defeats the purpose. <laughs> then you take off a layer, then you're sweating and then you're cold. It's like the, the old vicious cycle, hard problems to have, you know? Yeah. Did you, do you, <laughs> do, you, do you tell your kids how lucky they are to have a rink in their backyard? Do they know? Uh, often. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. You know, yeah, we, uh, you know, it's never like, in a mean way, it's like, Hey, we're, everyone else is literally sitting at home and maybe like you said, like Dingman, you know, puts a little rink in the backyard. Like you're, you're banking on weather. Like we got a little system in the back that we have ice for five months. So we're very, very fortunate. So I make sure he knows that. And my daughter knows that every day hey, <laughs> I'll shovel. Like guys got to come out and play though. We got, we got to have the fun, some fun together. Hey, that's a good deal. I, I, we referenced this on the uh, podcast that I did with Stamkos, and this actually originated from when you and I were doing it together. We interviewed Hedman, and Hedman, we talked to him about Instagram, and he said that he was getting off Instagram. He saw no use for it. I know that you feel the same way, but just so you know, Stammer was able to tell me that not only is Hedy, he's on Instagram, now he's got a public Instagram, but he would like to become an influencer, much like Alex Kalorn. So I don't know if you feel like the Stanley Cup is, has changed Hedy, but he's going in a different direction. No, that, you know what? <clears throat> There's only a few guys that, that could stick to their word like I am. So uh, I know I, I know always Callie never wanted to go on there. And he's, you know, obviously it's for him. It's a lot, you know, a lot of charity work on there too. So I'm not, I'm not saying anything bad about that, but you know, it's, 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 it's just honestly, it's part of the game and part of the life now. Like I just have, I have zero need for it. Like I don't really have anything to promote right now. And, and I don't need to hear people chirping me in on the comments all day. Like I got, I'm more of a positive thinker than that. So, um, but it, you never know down the line who knows what comes up, but you might have um, to get on there. G you might have to follow your young defenseman. You might have to see what they're up to, you know, who knows? Yeah, I might have to, you know, I might have to creep on their Instagram, make sure they're doing everything right. You know, <laughs> <laughs> G what do you miss most about, about being in Tampa? I mean, besides, you know, the weather, I mean, are there anybody you miss seeing every day around the neighborhood, anything like that? Well, you know, it's funny you asked that. Cause I actually was thinking about the other day, um, you know, I was driving around and listening to some tunes in the car and I, like songs come on. I'm like, oh, this, this reminds me of this and that, like in Tampa, like I do, obviously you miss, you miss the weather, you know, like, you know, going like 
the kids school is really good there. We had a good thing going and And obviously my son's hockey team was a great team. Uh, and they're fully playing right now. I know they're, you know, they could have the chance to get COVID or whatever, but they're fully playing. And we missed that. We wish we were there with them and, and having some fun and traveling to tournaments. Um, I do miss going to the DI coffee bar though. I had to throw it out there. That's, that's, that's the spot I really do miss. And, you know, the, the plan is when life gets to back somewhat a normalcy, like we are coming, we're coming back, um, for sure to visit. Uh, I want to bring our team here and go play Vinny's team and, you know, have some fun and maybe catch a lightning game. Like I said, all depends on how life gets going here in the next year. So, um, I'm out, I'm, I know I only spent three years there in Tampa, but it was a really, really good fun time in my life. And the kids were older and they really understood it. So, um, you know, I'm definitely, definitely good to come visit there at least once a year. Well, listen, I mean, hit me up when you're down here. I mean, don't come down here without, you know, letting <laughs> me know, are you watching Cali on NHL network at all? And are you chirping him or you're, uh, you're not able to catch him cause you're watching so many games. Well, I think the, the issue is uh, in Canada here, we don't get that. We don't get the NHL network. Oh. That's something that I actually, I miss because, you know, the TSN, like Sports Center here is great. It's all a lot of hockey and same with uh, Sportsnet. It's really good. But you don't get to watch the, you know, NHL network is just like highlight after highlight after highlight, game after game. So even my son said that he was like, I miss watching NHL on the fly. I'm like, I know, now, now we can't chirp Cali either. So, um, <laughs> you know, but. You know, I, I know, I think he's doing some NHL, like some NB, NBCSN stuff too. I think maybe he's got going, but um, I'm able to catch that because I bought the NHL package through my satellite. So I'll be able to catch, depending when he's on, I might be able to catch it. So, um, you know, he's doing some good things and I'm happy for him. What do you think about the way the divisions are set up this year? Do you think that when you were playing, you would have liked it to, to just pay, play the same eight teams? You don't have to go across the country a couple times a year. Yeah. I, like, again, I think, I think the NHL is doing a pretty good job of, you know, taking the hand they're dealt kind of type of deal. Like, you know, the bubble worked out very well. Um, you know, these divisions are kind of cool. Like it's kind of how it used to be back in the day a little bit, you know, when you put, you did play the other teams, but you played your division a lot. Even when I first came in, I think I was playing the Islanders and devils with the Rangers, like six to eight times a year. Like it, the, you get in some heated battles with that and, I think it's, I think it's pretty neat with the shortened season that every game actually means something, you know, every, although an 82 game schedule, every game means something. I know that, but uh, there's more on the line when you're only playing your division and all every point matters over time. You know, if you get taken to overtime, that's another point away, away from you. So um, yeah, I, it, it's been awesome to watch very competitive and hard fought games with no fans, which is pretty, pretty interesting in itself, but yeah. Um, it, it's, yeah, they're doing a great job. It's awesome. Do you, I mean, do you think that you could play? I mean, it, it's, you got to go out there and do your job. I mean, but would you, would you be okay playing with no fans? Do you think it would have an impact on how you actually played your game? I think, I don't think so. I think the only, like the weird thing would be like when they're doing the player intros and no one's there. That was the, like, I think the lightning did it with the groups or something forwards. I can't remember what they did. I was watching it with Landon. Um, but I know some, I think Buffalo did it like individual players. Like it's funny, right? Like you could tell her like, what are we doing? <laughs> like, like, you know what? We give a little salute, but there's no one there. Like there's the GM in the stand. That's about it. But, uh, you know, I think after that part of it, like, you know, you got a little bit of crowd noise, you got your goal horns, like, you know, it, it is what it is, right? You want to play, you got to, this is circumstances, right? Absolutely. Do you think that if you were uh, still in Tampa Bay that you would be trying to go to the Super Bowl? I know that you don't care about football whatsoever, but do you think that you'd be trying to get in because you'd be, you know, caught up in uh, the the hype that is the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and Tom Brady? Well, yeah, I well, I think I would definitely try. I know that I would have to worry about NHL protocols and being out in public and, you know, like I'd be able to maybe sneak in there. I don't know if Breezer has any type of pull around this city, but um <laughs> But, uh, you know, like, I, 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 it is pretty neat, though. Like, you know, obviously, like, I don't, like I said, I don't follow football a ton, but the Bills here locally across the border here were doing very well. Like, me and my son, and we were looking forward to the Bills and, and Bucks. you know, close team here across the border. And then, you know, the team we, you know, we went, I took him to one of the games. So he does, you know, obviously he knows who Tom Brady is, Gronk, like, pretty, pretty self explanatory guys that he knows. So, uh, we will be watching though. We'll be, obviously we'll be cheering for the box. So um, it, it's, it's something fun that obviously we can't have a big party and enjoy with anyone, but 
we'll make it our own and you know i'll, I'll have enough beers for four people i guess <laughs> do you, how do you feel about that bill's tradition of putting people through a table are you into that uh no but the bills mafia is, is something else though like they're a pretty unique fan base and it's pretty cool and i know i have friends here that you know you obviously can't go to the games. So there, there was some fans there but you know used to go to the games religiously so you know maybe once they start getting fans and i'll maybe hop on one of the buses over to buffalo and have some fun <laughs> is it weird working for the sabers i'm sure when you're playing for the Ra- rangers your whole career and then you know with the lighting you never thought you'd be involved with the buffalo organization right uh no definitely you know it was it was maybe a little bit in the back of my head since i'm i'm actually only like 20 minutes door to door like from my house here uh to the downtown where the sabers are like it's 20 minutes so i I train there yeah i train there for like three summers at the the there's a gym and a rink attached to their their big rink there so very familiar with a lot of the guys some of the staff but not like a lot because you know a little changeover but um, like I said, I, I've, I've skated and worked with my friend there. That's the director for a while now. So we have a really good relationship and, you know, we're hoping we can, we can help these prospects as best we can. So forgive my ignorance. So when you're going to work every single day, you're crossing the, what the Canadian American border. Um, I actually am not going to work because the borders have been closed for a wh- long time now. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so, but you, uh, when you were going to work, that's what you were doing. Yeah, no, but like I said, I, you know, started just after January 1st. So, you know, I'm, I have zero saber swag at all in my house. So like, I can't even, I was going to, you know, wear something, but I got nothing and I can maybe go to the local sports store here and go grab something. But, um, but I know that's close too, because we're in lockdown. Um, <laughs> oh my but, God, man. Yeah. This so they're a- going to probably just send me some stuff and, you know, I need my team issue computer so I can upload all my, my notes and stuff. And, um, you know, I do have my work visa, but we're still trying to figure out now that Biden's the president, like if any of the rules have changed. So it's the waiting game, but I'm not, I'm in, I'm in zero rush to get over there. Cause they really don't need me per se, like at the Sabres games and like right hands on with those guys yet. You know, if you want to be hands on with those guys, you gotta, you're, you gotta get in the NHL testing protocol. So. Uh, I'm not willing to get into that yet, but okay. um, I, I, it, the job is, is very good that I can do everything from home, um, you know, because you're not traveling to go see any prospects now anyways. You can't even go over the border. So, um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a perfect start that I can really, really get to know everything before I actually go head over there. Gee, I forgot. I mean, it's like, I, I, I take it for granted. And like you said, when we started this thing off, you're like, yeah, in Florida, we're wild and free. And I'm like, no, we're not, but we can do really anything we want down here. So um, I, I, I for totally forgot that you're on lockdown, <laughs> but despite you not having any Buffalo Sabres swag and not being able to go to the arena is the uh, direct deposit still clearing. Yeah. Okay. Just got, got one, got the first one out of the way. It, 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 the, the money gets sent. I'm actually in my office now. I can, I'm staring at the U S from here. I can, I'm across the river. I can, it's so crazy that I can't go over there and I'm literally a mile just across the way. Like it's right there. But, uh, but the money does get sent somehow over here. So it's good. There we go. Well, listen, G, I appreciate you doing this. The 50th episode. I had no idea that, you know, not o- much like you said, when the Sabres reached out to you about the job, it was the same way I felt when Breezeman reached out to me about doing this with you and we started doing it. And I'm shocked that they let me continue it when you moved on, you know, and all that stuff. But, you know, here we are 50 episodes deep and, and thank you for starting it. Thank you for letting me be a part of it. And, and I'm so uh, grateful to be able to carry it on, man. And I'm happy for you because I, I felt like coaching was where you needed to be all along. And, and I'm glad that you're into it. And, uh, you know, I can't wait to see you be a head coach one day soon. Yeah. You know, hopefully it all works out. And it's funny. I actually, I put the doing the podcast on my resume. So, Hey, you helped me out with a uh, part of my resume. So I could, I had nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> I had, I'm like, I, I was talking to someone. I'm like, well, what can I put down? I'm like, Oh, didn't you do like a podcast? I'm like, Hey, there you go. I did hey, 20 episodes of just pure heat. Just unbelievable talk. You know what, G I didn't want to tell you, they called me for a reference and I talked you up well. So um, I'm glad there, you put yeah. the podcast on there. Yeah. The owner of the Sabres give you a show today. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to get a job too. G thanks a lot, man. I'm sorry that you guys are on lockdown. Hopefully you can get out soon, man. And good luck with the Sabres. We're definitely rooting for you, man. All right. Thanks. I appreciate it. Yeah. hundred episode. You know, I'm, I'll be right here waiting for you. All right, we'll be there. And if you need this for your office, let me know. I'll send it to you, okay?
you know what? I, I somehow one came back with me from my move. So of course. it's somewhere in that. It might be in the garage, actually. It's just kind of like creepy a little bit. But yeah, it is. It is every, creepy. <laughs> every time I pull in, I'm like, why am I staring at myself? You're right. It is. It is creepy. I'm going to just, I'm going to, I'll, I'll put it down for now. Gee, right there. Gee, thanks a lot. I'll see you on the hundredth episode, man. All right, buddy. Take care. Right, see ya. Bye.